Hello there, this is Founder Leroon again, and we are using Fantasy Grounds Unity Beta. This is going to be Lost Mine of Fandelver DM setup. I want you to watch the first few videos if you haven't already. Those go through a lot of setup and layout. And now I'm going to show you how modules, at least pre-purchased modules, or official Fantasy Grounds modules are put together and start getting you to think in different terms as far as the information that's being presented to you. This will help you organize your thoughts and it will help you get organized for your campaign. The next video, I'm gonna show you how I actually prep for a session. So let's get started. All right, so first things first, we went over layout before. Since I changed the resolution of my computer, I have to readjust my setup here, which happens if you change the resolution. I'm gonna also bring up the combat tracker that's about where I would have that. And then I will go to my library, which is on the bottom right corner. And these are all the books I have loaded. So I have Lost Minds of Fandelver Adventure. I have the Sword Coast Adventures Guide, which isn't necessarily needed, but it does help. It gives you more background lore of the setting. And then I have the three core books, which is the Monster Manual, the Dungeon Master's Guide, and the Player's Handbook. Now, to make this Player's Handbook and the Sword Coast Adventures Guide available for players, you have to go into the modules area, which is on the bottom left corner of the library window, and it will bring up the modules that I have stored on my machine. Now, the reason this takes a little bit longer is because I have too much stuff. I have a ton of content. So if you want to minimize your load time, especially in uh, Unity, you want to make sure that you don't have too much on your hard drive. Uh, one of the things that uh, people tend to do is go overboard, and then when they try to access something, it takes a bit for it to come up. So here, I'm going to just click on all, which will only show the modules that I have loaded. So this is a feature that you should get used to. And now I have the calendar and I have a few modules loaded here. By clicking on this green button, this allows players to have access to it. So the Sword Coast Adventures Guide, right now this is the map and the guide itself. But if I wanted to bring up the player's guide, I will do a search in the modules field and you can bring that up. Really, um, Speaking, once you've accessed these modules, they come up a little bit sooner. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and search for Sword. So if I want to make this available for my players to use, I need to load it first, in which it's loaded. And what they'll get from this particular book, from the Sword Coast Adventures Guide, is they get a lot of backgrounds, and then there's one um, archetype for fighters, and it's like the Purple Knight. So that is basically um, how you enable content. If for some reason you didn't want them to have access, you can Click on this and it wouldn't allow them to load it. And if you click on it again, this will make it visible to them in the library. So when your players join your table, if they need to work on characters, you have to make the accessories available to them so that they can create characters. Otherwise, if they're not doing character creation or leveling up, they won't need a bunch of books. So you can temporarily disable content. It's not going to break anything unless they level up or you're building a character. At that point, then you can unload until you need it again, which will cut down on resources and also confusion. Now, I usually keep the player's handbook available to them just so they have reference. Reference to whatever they are looking at, especially spells and things like that. And also they may be leveling up or trying to swap their spells out. So I usually leave the player's handbook available to them, but all the other books for character creation probably don't need it until you level up. So I will go ahead and close this, but before I do, I want to go to game master mode right now i am in this mode called all uh, when i get ready to play i'll click on gm but for right now i'll leave it on all so that i can show you the different sections of the lost mine of fendover module so if i click here this actually shows all the content in this module so i'm in the library view and on top and under adventure i clicked on D, &D lost mine of fendover and over on the right hand side are the different sections if you want to see the actual book, the actual hardback representation, you click on the reference manual, bring this up and kind of stretch it out so you can see it a little bit more. Click on this header up here, and then you're going to get into the meat of the book. And on the bottom right, you can navigate with the arrows. It looks like you're turning a page. And then you have a search function on the bottom left. And chapter one starts here under part one, and this takes you through the module just like you're going through an adventure. So this is the uh, reference manual or the actual digital representation of the book. So if you want to do this more in a modular standpoint, which is a little bit more flexible and less uh, solid state, I'm going to show you how this is laid out in Fantasy Ground. So you have your story entry, which is the heart of everything. 
Everything is pretty much connected to the story. Uh, you have your maps and images. So this is your visual. This is like the head of everything. So these are your handouts, pictures of NPCs, maps, menus, whatever. And then you have your NPCs. Now, NPCs are your non-playing characters or they would also be considered uh, monsters and such. Also, traps and vehicles are also considered NPCs. You have items. So items is pretty self-explanatory. That's your equipment. So again, items basically is all of your tr your weapons, armor, gear, treasure, you know, except for coins. Then you have your encounters. So encounters are made up by NPCs. So encounters is where you set your CR level and your challenge rating along with your experience points. And then your items will make parcels. So parcels is basically another way to say treasure or loot. So parcels are made up of coins and items. And then you have tables, and those give you your randomization. They give you, and then you have, of course, we're going to have your quest items. So quest items are more or less items to reward you for quest-related events, milestones, uh, things that will help move the story along. So non-combat, in other words. So this is my Lost Mine Offend Over Robot. If you've taken my classes, you've probably seen this before, but this is how I remember how everything's laid out. Now, the next thing to understand is you're not going to have all the stuff open at once. This is just so you understand how it's laid out and how it's connected. So now what I'm going to do is filter each group. So if I come down and click on this group heading, and I just want the Lost Mine of over. So that sorts it. And as you can see, there's NPC in there. Same thing with this group, but I'm just going to go to the... Um, artwork, so Lost Mine of Fandelver artwork. Um, the story, I'm going to go to the beginning, which is your intro and your background and such. Same thing with encounters. I'm clicking on this header, it has a drop down arrow. And I want to click on part one, because that's all I'm going to worry about. So I want you to get focused on what you're going to be looking at. So here's the quest items that go with the adventure. And this is some tables, but they don't come up till part three. Parcels is your treasure. So that's inside the module as well. And then I'm going to load up the Sword Coast Adventures Guide, or excuse me, Lost Mine of Fandelver, just the regular treasure items. So these are non-magical. It's broken up into two groups. And then there's also magic items. So these are all the different aspects of this setting. Most settings have all of these different categories, although depending on what the supplement it is that you have, they may not contain every single one of these. Um, for larger adventures and for campaigns, generally you have all these things. Sometimes modules or very narrow scoped items will only have a couple or maybe two or three. But these are how these are laid out. And if you understand that, that's how you can focus um, your attention on what you're working on. The other thing is if you have it on all for these groups over here, you're going to be looking at every single entry that you have for your library. So if you use these filters, you can filter in what you need to focus on. So in this case, the encounters and the story items, I mean, I don't have this on chapter one, but I will once I get ready to start setting up this campaign. So this is just a way to think about how these things are laid out and how they're organized. And then generally, everything is kind of tied into these story entries. So when you go to a story entry, it'll have other links that might link to one or two of these other groups, depending on the content. And as you page through these, you'll see there's a quest. So that brings up a quest item, which is stored down here in the quests. Uh, this page is all story, but then there's some maps. So these maps and images are stored under uh, Lost Mine Offend Over Maps. So all these different aspects of Fantasy Grounds tie into the story entry. And even subcategories or chapters tie into the story as well.
And then here you have a magic item explanation. It goes into stats from monsters, like how to how to read them and what they mean. So this was really meant for a new DM, so this is really good information here. But you want the contents, um, to go through that, and then you want to go through your background, overview, and adventure hook, and I'm going to get into that shortly uh, when I um, go over the uh, actual session zero. So right now, I just want you to focus on what content you have, whether it's this module or something else, and this is how you filter it. So you use these groups to categorize and filter what sections of a given uh, module or supplement that you're using. Um, if you need to look at some of the others and not just Lost Mind, you can click on the down arrow again and click All, and that'll take you back to where you're viewing everything. So not just rounds. Um, you need to think of it in a modular view, which is what I'm showing you now. But then you can also look at it in the book format, which is in your library. And then you have this content when you click on it. A lot of this content or these buttons are parallel to some of these groups. Uh, quest items, for instance, is the same as this, except for this is embedded into the uh, reference manual. The, uh, the reference manual itself is the actual book, which is where all this stuff derives from. And then you have all these different sections here that kind of correspond with all these. The exception is the pre-generated characters and the reference manual. So very few supplements come with pre-gens. But when you open this up, you can click these green plus buttons and they will add the characters to your campaign, which end up becoming part of your pool of characters that your, your players can choose from. So right now I just have a blank sheet. But if I click on these green plus buttons, it actually adds them to the um, selection. So when your players connect to the table, if you don't want to spend two hours creating characters, you can just have them run these. So this is just a, an overview of how the, the module is created, how it's laid out, sort of, how it connects, uh, some of the different things to look to. There is no banner for pregens or for the reference manual on the right-hand side of the menu items on the interface. So those you have to actually go through the actual book in the library. But as far as everything else, the images, NPCs, those things are available on the right-hand side banners. The way to see all these is go into library and click on all. Once you're done getting an idea of what your content has, you can go back to GM mode, and that narrows this list down so you're not getting confused. What that does in GM mode is it takes all the character creation stuff out of here. If you want to build characters, you click on Create PC, and it will show you just the banners that are related to character creation. So this is just a way to organize what you're looking at so you're not getting confused or having too many options. It's very easy to get options paralysis if you have too many things in front of you. Uh, you can also sort this out, customize if you need to, but this is a way to keep your scope and your focus on what you need to worry about. So that is it for this uh, segment in Chapter uh, 4 of this series. Is This is pretty much navigation of this particular um, pre-bought uh, canned item. If you want to make your own content, you can do so. I'm not going to cover it in this class. But there are ways that you can add your own content to each one of these groups and include them in your adventures, but actually keep them separate so they don't pollute or change anything too drastically. So with that in mind, I'm going to go, and hopefully this is helpful to you. Remember to try to keep focused on what your content is and don't get sidetracked with too many side things. You know, you can get really, really wrapped up in, in something and go off on a tangent very easily. So when you're prepping for a game, um, just focus on the module, do a little bit of reading, and I'm going to show you how to organize your campaign to make it much simpler for you when you actually go in head first. Uh, homebrew content is a, another topic. Um, I will touch on that maybe in a different class, but for right now, I just want you to get used to using Unity and learning how the software works 
whether it's in Unity or Classic. So this this part will be the same in both uh, both setting or both uh, platforms. So anyhow, take care and hope to see you next video. Um, episode number five, I'm going to be going into my session zero prep. So take care. Bye bye.